questions. And uh, <clears throat> we'll please ask everybody to share the event. Our today's presentation is gonna be around 30, 40 minutes. And then with the main presentation, I'll share some information later. And then uh, we'll go to our room o'clock. All right. Uh, today's presentation uh, is Women Leading Rum in North America. Uh, we have a lot of special guests, uh, which is phenomenal. Actually, today on the Rum Lab, we released um, the an infographic, which is about seven women leading North American rum. Uh, if you can, you like to download it, obtain it, go to the rumlab.com. It's a beautiful art piece by Jose Hoffman. Uh, we have many infographics as well. And, but enough said, let me, everybody, the ladies are already here, but let me bring them out here uh, nice and so we can all see each other. Uh, hi, Jamie. Hi, John. Hi, Julie. Arla and Maggie. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, so since we're many, uh, I think the best way is that we kind of, the way I, I'm seeing the screens, I have to my left, I have uh, Julie, then Joanne, then Maggie, and then Julie, and uh, no, Jamie, sorry, sorry, then Julie and Arla. There we go. So we can go like that. I'll, I'll, I'll say the names. Plus, I also have videos from Karen and Erin that could not participate because they had uh, previous commitments, but they do. Sh they did share some videos. I think the first thing we should do is talk about a, about your a quick brief about who you are, and maybe we can actually jump to the first question when you're talking about who you are. You can also let me know or let everybody know what were you doing 20 years ago, and what was your perspective about the alcohol industries. Let's start with Jamie. Oh, goodness. Um, hello, I'm Jamie. I am in St. Michael's, Maryland, and I started Lion Rum uh, Distillery almost just over seven years ago. Um, I'm about to have a birthday, and what that means is that this time 20 years ago, I was about to turn 21, so things were very different. I was definitely not as booze soaked as I am now, nor should I have been. Um, but you know, I was already in. I was already in the spirit world uh, when I was um, in my late teens. I started working in hospitality, so I worked at golf courses and hotels and restaurants, and uh, found myself in from everything from a beverage cart at a golf cart course to um, to behind the bar, learning about food and spirits. And so most of my life has been in this space. Um, but seven years ago, everything changed, or I guess almost eight, um, when decided to actually start start making rum and bringing that back to this little tiny corner of the world. Um, St. Michael's is a lovely town. We're on the eastern shore of Maryland, and I have neighbors that are a, a brewery and a winery, and it just kind of fit and made sense. So we do really, really small batch um, American rum. We use Louisiana sugarcane. We do a traditional double pot distillation. And we we love rum. We believe you know all you need is rum, and it can it can do so many <laughs> versatile things. And I'm really excited to be here with um, my fellow rum makers in this space. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jamie. Uh, all right, John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Joanna Lardo, I want to say like I'm five foot eight. <laughs> um, Joanna Lardo, I'm in Cape Coral. Florida, Wicked Dolphin is our rum distillery, and I started this in 2011. Um, 20 years ago, I would say I was in Eastern and Central Europe, right when the wall broke. Um, I started a business over there um, in retail, and it wound up into a, a pretty large dis distribution center. We were the licensing uh, agents or the licensees for Converse Sneakers. We had Skechers, Merrill, Caterpillar, most of the American brands because there was no, nobody else over there at that time. And um, I lived and worked and commuted back and forth from, from there for, for 19 years. I sold the business in 2008, just one of those lucky breaks where somebody came in and wanted us very bad. And um, I found myself in Florida. I was visiting my parents down here. I, most people, like if you're from New York, your parents are in Florida. It's just the law. And um, I was visiting my mom down here, and she said, um, before you leave, you know, make sure you we, we bought a little place. And uh, I 
never went back. I just loved it here. And um, I had some interests in some farming in Florida. And one of them was a little bit in sugarcane. I had, I was looking into investing in something and I was drinking a terrible rum. And I was sitting there on the lanai having a rum and I go, oh my gosh, this shouldn't be so bad down here. This, this should be much better. And I took a look at it and I said, I think we can do this. 80% of the sugar cane at that time was being, was from Florida. So I started looking into the sugar cane fields and the different sugars and, and what was being produced down here. And it really caught my interest. I bought myself a small still, uh, convinced my nephew to come down and um, the two of us started making some rum. And for about two years, we just made rum. We didn't tell anybody we were making rum. We were just lucky enough to be able to do that. So um, finally, we started coming out with something that we really liked. And we still didn't come out and tell anybody what we were doing. People started knocking on our door and asking, we hear that you're making some rum here. and We'd like to try it out. So we started getting a lot of people from the other coast of Miami coming over and asking us and we said, you know what, maybe we should uh, get this get this out there. And that was the start of our career. And Wicked Dolphin right now, we see we see a lot of visitors a year. We have um, tours at the distillery. We're in distribution in Florida. We're doing a little bit in Massachusetts, but we're primarily in Florida. We're also available on um, Spirit Hub um, and, and some, some uh, websites. And... Um, we love what we do. You know, this is the perfect environment for us to be in. And Excellent. we're very grateful. One other thing is just because we get so much agriculture down here that we're able to try different flavors and different things all the time. And that's what I love. So you'll find me here for another 20 years. <laughs> Excellent. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, all right. What about, okay, let's go. I'm going to jump to uh, Julie and Arla. Oh God, we got to follow Joanne. I know. <laughs> so I, I really want to try that mango. <laughs> I'm Julie and this is Arla. And um, we are here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're uh, so, so happy to be uh, part of this group. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how we got into this group, but we are pretty <laughs> Pretty happy, pretty excited. And if anybody's wondering where Nova Scotia is, we are probably about seven hours from Bangor, Maine, northeast. Just keep That's driving us. north. <laughs> and you'll And uh, so we uh, started a distillery actually in Prince Edward Island, which is about four hours from here, um, in 2007. So 20 years ago, I would say that I was trying to convince her to do a distillery. It took me a good 10 ten eight to 10 years to talk Four. her into it. Four. And, um, and a couple of bottles of rum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it did take a lot of convincing back at that time because there were hardly any little guys out there. So um, it was really new. It was a really new idea. I think at the time there was probably in um, Canada, all of Canada, maybe eight to 12 small micro distilleries that was it in all Canada and when she came to me with this idea she thought it was nuts oh my gosh because I do the books and the numbers and find the money when she runs out and I was like oh my gosh I I just make make the rum she does everything else <laughs> yeah but you got the most important job uh, but we we love it here in Halifax we love doing rum um we use a Crosby's molasses which is uh from New Brunswick just the province over and they bring up the sugar from uh, Central America. Yeah. But uh, PI, we started making potato vodka at Prince Edward Distillery over there. And uh, I can tell you, after shoveling all those potatoes, I love making rum. I <laughs> love making rum. And it's, it's what we drink here in the Maritimes. So uh, you got to know your market. So it yeah. took us a little bit to figure it out. And uh, I guess you can say we pivoted back then <laughs> to move over here to Halifax in 2016. And it was the best move for yeah. sure. And they say the number one selling spirit globally used to be vodka, except in the Maritimes, it's rum. It's rum. And we use fancy grade molasses versus a lot of people use black strap. But um, Crosby's, as Julie mentioned, brings in beautiful fancy grade molasses from Guatemala. And that, that's what we use for the base for our rum. Excellent. And interesting, right? Because, uh, and Maggie can also talk about, because she, when we had the 13 colonies, 
uh, rum was the most consumed spirit in in the Americas. Yeah. Did was there an impact already in Nova Scotia too as well, or uh, or that I, because no books books stay like it stops at Maine. I, I never hear anything about after Maine. Yeah. Al so. Roker never says where does that weather go? It just stops at Maine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Nova Scotia was a big part of the prohibition because we supplied the U.S. with all the liquor because just north of here is a little island off the coast of Newfoundland called St. Pierre and Migalone. And this little island off of Newfoundland is owned by France. France didn't have uh, prohibition. So that was the big distribution center. So all the boats that used to, sh to uh, be used to fish now were going up to St. Pierre and Migalone, getting the alcohol, and they were right connected with um, what was the Capone. Capone, he would be seen up here getting his logistics and, and his supply, but we were, we were the main suppliers All going the down runners. off the coast of uh, the east coast of the U.S. Yeah, uh -huh. interesting. So there's blood. There's uh, there's uh, that blood of uh, contrabanding. <laughs> <laughs> We're always helping you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> and then Maggie, can you? Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit of, um, about you. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry. Let me fix this here. And there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so 20 years ago, I was 17 years old. Ooh, so <laughs> uh, I was very into punk rock and food, not bombs. And I didn't know that in about three years, um, 17 years ago, I would end up in the town of Oban in Scotland and tour the distillery there because I got stuck in that town. And a woman on the street said I should go to the distillery. And that I would say, oh, this is a job that people do. I could do this job. And so that's what started it for me. Uh, so, yeah, it's, you know, I this is my only career, my first career. It's it's all I've really done is the, the drinks business. Um, and I kind of took that excitement back to the U.S. This was before a lot of, you know, there was like the first wave craft distilling stuff like German Roll Bond, like some of the really early starters who were really small and less known um, were in existence, but this was kind of, I had really good timing to be at the start of that second wave, um, which was sort of the 2009, um, well, I should say more like 2004, 2006 kind of era. Um, so I went to wine school and studied winemaking and distillation and how pumps work and how to taste different casks to create a blend, um, and how to decipher quality and how to technically taste, um, and the science of fermentation and the chemistry of alcohol. And, um, started working, you know, as a private wine buyer at a wine shop. And I started to figure out that if I knew the most about spirits, which I did already, um, that I could kind of get to do some of the most fun stuff. And so that's when I started around 2004, popping into craft distilleries, asking questions, trading pastrami sandwiches in exchange for lessons or borrowing books. Um, and, you know, I met Karen Hoskins right when she first began. I remember her coming in and, and meeting with her right when she had her very first bottles coming out. So we've known each other since the beginning and she was always really encouraging. And um, I had always planned to make whiskey, uh, but I always joke that like rum picked me. Um, so I went and worked at Germain Robin. Uh, which was a great experience to learn all the cognac traditions. Um, you know, they were in the midst of launching a whiskey. I had, you know, some experience there. Um, and then it was Hubert Germain Robin who introduced me to Privateer Rum, which I just did almost a decade at, nine years. Um, so sort of bringing that vision to life um, and, you know, really trying to hit on the traditional New England rum and you know, really embracing the community out here. Uh, learning all about that and, you know, trying to create, you know, an image of high quality rum from a less known region. Obviously, you know, uh, we all know that rum was made here for a very long time, but getting consumers to be excited about it as a rum category was a labor of love. Um, and so now currently I've transitioned away from privateer and I work with a number of small distillers right now, but I'm kind of excited about finding my next adventure. So 
it's been interesting. Uh, in the last few weeks, a lot of our fellow American craft distillers have reached out just to connect and say hi and touch base and tell me about their projects. And it's kind of cool. I think when I was with a company, people maybe didn't approach me in the same way. And now it's kind of a cool role to hear what everyone's up to and, and connect people with each other um, and do that kind of stuff as well. So, you know, my background was mostly in like the technical side to begin with. Um, you know, I studied at Siebel and alcohol school, uh, Jamaica. And, you know, I, I have like the technical background, but I also really like to kind of blend it with the artful background as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just about in my 17th year of pursuing this. Um, and it's been, you know, great. I've, I've been fortunate to have the distillery experiences I have from, you know, traveling with David Pickerel to working under Uber to getting to be kind of at the earlier start of the East Coast rum in, you know, the United States, continental United States. So uh, it's been a long road, but it just keeps getting longer. Spirits is always, you know, the long distance race. I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> Ma Maggie, and when, when did you tell your parents, and I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about my daughter right now. I'm like, like, hey, hey, dad, I want to study up. I want to be like, an, I want to study up, uh, uh, specialize on alcohol and the creation. And like, like they were like, okay, let's do it. We'll help you. Um, I had a lot of freedom as a child. So my parents weren't super involved. Um, it was more of just me being like, I'm just going to do this. I'm just it's doing right. it. That's kind of how I've <laughs> kind of always done what I've done. So uh, it just worked well for me to just be like, this is what I'm going to do now. I, we kind of joke about that. This is what we're doing now and just going out and doing it. So, Well, I do have a video of Karen uh, that you mentioned her. And let me bring her uh, with a, a quick intro. Hi, my name is Karen Hoskin. I am the owner of Montagna Distillers, normally in Crested Butte, Colorado, although right now I'm standing in San Clemente, California. My distillery is almost 13 years old and... Um, we are kind of one of the early vanguards of American rum's resurgence. So 13 years ago, there wasn't much happening in the craft spirits world at all, not to mention in the craft rum world. So that's where I got my start. I'm the owner and founder and um, pretty much every position you can picture. I'm so jealous. Uh, Karen, you can see she's getting like a 10 and here I am in Seattle, I'm getting whiter every time. <laughs> Um, well, um, thank you. Let's go. I'm going to go and, and then jump to, to our next question, which is what unique opportunities and or benefits have you experienced being a woman in the rum industry? Uh, and we'll start, of course, with Jamie. Um, 